body was super confused. You might see the scale go up, but that is not a bad thing. What is healthy for one person is not necessarily what's healthy for you. I was quite frankly just scared of changing. What is up you guys? Happy Tuesday and welcome back to my channel in another video. If you are new here and you don't know who I am, my name is Reese. I'm 22 years old and I like making content about fitness, food, and all things health and wellness. Today, you're gonna wanna get out your pencil and a piece of paper because we are going through five things I wish I had known before I started my fitness journey. I haven't done an entire video on just my fitness journey and my whole story and everything like that. And I'm going to do one eventually. I'm kind of just like working myself up to it because it's definitely been a long tumultuous path. But to do a little bit of a recap, I started lifting and got into the gym, I think it was about six years ago. I played volleyball all throughout middle school and high school. It was my junior year of high school. I think that I started going to the gym regularly and then I lifted through the end of my senior year and then I stopped playing volleyball when I went to college and I've done lifting all throughout college and I just graduated a couple months ago. So it has been probably about about six years, I have definitely learned a lot. The way that I train now is very, very different than the way I trained when I first started back in that junior year of high school when I was 16 years old. If I had known some of the things that I know now, it would have saved me so much time and just so much energy and so much frustration, honestly, that I wasn't getting anywhere. So I'm really excited to share this video with you guys. And when I sat down to brainstorm all of the things I wish I had known when I started my journey. I mean, I think I came up with about 28 things. This is what I came up with. It was a massive list. So for this video, I narrowed it down to just five things, but don't worry, there will definitely be a part two because there are just so many things that I wish I had known before I got started. I also wanna give a bit of a disclaimer with this video that in regards to my fitness journey, I'm mostly referencing weightlifting because that has been the majority of of what I've focused on throughout fitness. Fitness and fitness journeys can encompass so many things outside of resistance training and weightlifting. And a lot of these things will apply outside of that. But I just wanna let you guys know that some of these things mostly pertain to weightlifting or resistance training, just because that's what I'm familiar with and that's what I've kind of done throughout the years and learned from. But that is not the only right way to do fitness or the right way to move your body. That is just my personal preference and what I love doing. But with all that said, let's get into this video and into the first thing that I wish I had known before it started my fitness journey. So the first thing that I wish I had known when starting my fitness journey is that less can be more. You do not need to pack 10 exercises and 40 different sets into a workout. You do not need to be in the gym for over an hour in order to have a good workout and get something out of it. This is something that I was doing just so wrong in the beginning. I've been using the same app all the way throughout high school and college for lifting. It's called the Strong app. It's really nice because you can build your own programs on there and put in all the exercises and make your workouts. And if I scroll all the way back and I look at my workouts that I was doing back in 2019, my upper body days, sometimes I would have 12 different exercises and I would be doing four different supersets and I would be doing four sets of everything. And I don't know how I wasn't spending an excessively long time in the gym. I was just doing way too much. For muscle hypertrophy, the National Academy of Sports Medicine recommends anywhere from 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle group in order to see that muscle growth. So if you're packing four sets of five different shoulder exercises into a workout and doing that two times a week, it's really not gonna make that much of a difference compared to if you were just doing two shoulder exercises and four sets of that two times a week in terms of getting stronger and growing your muscles. And really what I was doing by doing so much in one workout is I wasn't really allowing myself to progressively overload and get stronger because I was wearing myself out so much within that workout that I wasn't able to actually lift more and really push myself to my maximum capacity because I was just fatiguing my muscles. If I had known this earlier, it would have saved me so much time and energy. It probably would have really just helped 
me grow my muscles so much faster. I feel like it's taken me so long to see muscle growth. And just to give you like a comparison between my workouts then and my workouts now, like I said, I was probably doing 10 to 12 exercises on my upper body days and at least eight exercises on my lower body days. Today, I do about five exercises each leg day, no more than six. And on my upper body days, I'll do maybe like seven exercises and I don't do four sets of everything. The crazy thing is it still takes me about the same amount of time to just do those five exercises as when I was doing those workouts that had eight exercises in them, but that's because I'm actually able to really focus on the exercise that I'm doing, focus on my mind muscle connection, really push myself with the weight and give it my 100% effort. Whereas when I was doing 10 exercises in a workout, I was kind of just going through the motions because because I was so tired and I just wanted to get it done. And it was like, oh my gosh, I have how many exercises left? Whereas when you just have five exercises, you can really focus on making the most out of those. So that is one thing that I highly recommend. If you're trying to fit that many exercises in a workout, you do not need to. Lower the amount of exercises that you're doing and really give your time and energy and attention to those couple of exercises. And you're gonna see much better results than if you try to do so much in one workout. And speaking of less being more and wearing yourself out, the second thing that I wish I had known before starting my fitness journey is to take rest seriously. For so many years, I was going to the gym minimum six days a week, which works for some people, but it was a lot. Spending an hour in the gym six days a week is putting a lot of stress on your body. And I really wasn't allowing my muscles and I wasn't allowing myself to really rest properly. Your muscles aren't actually growing when you're working out. Your muscles are being broken down when you're working out. Literally what weightlifting does is it creates little tears in your muscles and those tears repair themselves in between the times that you're working out. So your muscles are actually growing when you're resting. So this time is incredibly important and something that you really have to take seriously. You should be taking at least one rest day a week minimum and really it would probably be better to be taking at least two or even three. You do not need to be lifting six days a week in order to see results. And sometimes if you're training that much, you actually might be hurting your results in the long run because you're not giving your muscles enough time to recover. So the third thing I wish I had known before I started my fitness journey was that in order to see muscle growth, you need to eat enough. I did not see progress for years because I was under eating and I wasn't fueling my body properly and I wasn't fueling my workouts properly. In in most cases, to effectively build muscle, you need to be eating in a caloric surplus because your body is able to use that extra energy to build muscle tissue and put on mass. And the reason for this is because muscle is a very calorically expensive tissue. It needs a lot of energy in order to function and it needs a lot of energy in order to be built. So your body is not going to build muscle tissue if it thinks that it doesn't have enough energy to do so. You need to not only be eating enough, but you also need to be consistently eating enough. A big issue that I would have is I would recognize that I needed to eat more. And so I would start eating more, bump up my calories, and I would maybe keep at this for a couple weeks, sometimes a couple months. But after a couple months, I would get scared of eating that much. I would get scared of seeing the scale go up and I would drop my calories back down to what I was doing before, which probably wasn't in a surplus. It wasn't enough to be building muscle tissue and I would hinder that growth. I would kind of oscillate back and forth like this. I did that for years. And so my body was super confused and it was not willing to build this energy expensive tissue because your body is not going to spend energy building tissue if it doesn't think it has enough energy to do your other necessary bodily functions. That is for so long why I didn't see any muscle growth. I just wasn't eating enough. I mean, I had been lifting for two, three years and you would not be able to tell. I did not have any muscle on my body, despite, like I said, working out six days a week. As I already mentioned, part of that was overtraining, but even more of it was simply not fueling my body properly. You're also gonna have a really hard time pushing yourself in the gym and progressively overloading when you're hungry. You're not gonna have enough energy to put 100% into your workouts. I was just going to the gym, going through the motions to be able to have the 
the peace of mind that I did exercise that day and feeling like I was burning calories, I wasn't actually building muscle or making a whole lot of progress. Hence why my squat weight stayed the same for about three years. When you are eating in a surplus and if you are starting to build muscle, you're probably gonna see the scale go up. There are some cases where people are able to body recomp and they're able to eat at maintenance and build muscle while losing fat. I don't know enough about that to give a really good explanation for why that's possible. What I do know is that if you are eating more than you're burning and you're progressively overloading with resistance training, you are going to be able to build muscle and muscle weighs something. It weighs more than body fat because it's just more dense than body fat. So you might see the scale go up, but that is not a bad thing and that is not something you need to be scared of. So if you start seeing the scale go up, don't let that scare you you and revert back to not eating enough because if your goal is to build muscle you need to be eating enough and fueling your body properly with enough food the fourth thing that I wish I had known and had done at the beginning of my fitness journey was listen to my body if a food does not feel good when you eat it don't eat it if a certain exercise does not feel good to your body don't do it and if you're sick take a rest day it is okay I would see influencers on social media doing certain things and copy it because I thought that that's what I needed to do in order to be healthy, in order to look like them or look a certain way. A lot of those things that I would do did not feel good to me, but I would do them anyway because I thought that's what you had to do to be healthy. And it sounds so obvious, but things that are healthy to you should make you feel good and should make your body feel good. That's like the point of health. One major example of this for me was Quest Bars. I would eat Quest Bars and also those Dannon light and fit Greek yogurt, really low sugar, very artificial flavoring yogurt, which I do occasionally have sometimes now in a small amount, but I would eat one of those every single day. I'd be eating Quest bars. I'd be eating these protein bars. I would be eating them because I saw other fitness influencers doing it. I did it because they were really high in protein and I knew I needed to be eating a ton of protein, but you guys, I would eat those things and I would feel terrible afterward. I would feel so bloated. My gut health was an absolute mess. They didn't even taste that good to me. I would just feel kind of like a wreck after I ate them and I would continue to eat them anyway because I thought that's what healthy was supposed to be. Everyone's body is different. What is healthy for one person is not necessarily what's healthy for you. I feel like it's just so important to recognize that health is so individual and a really good game of whether or not something's healthy for you is just if it makes you feel good. And so just listen to your body. Even with things like exercises, I used to do certain exercises that I hated and did not make me feel good and would make me feel like faint afterwards and so sore. I would do them because I thought this was the exercise that was gonna help me grow my glutes. This was the exercise that was gonna help me grow my shoulders. And I saw this person doing it, so it must be healthy because they're the picture of health. That is not the case. There's also no one exercise that is going to make your body look an exact way when you do it. And there are so many exercises that target the same muscle groups that if you hate doing an exercise, like you don't have to do it. You just don't. I didn't do squats for a long time because I hated them. I still kind of hate them, but deep down, I just really want to get better at them right now, which is kind of what's pushing me to do it, even though I don't find it super enjoyable. Like I said, you do not need to do certain exercises because someone else is doing it. It doesn't mean it's healthy for you. Also, the last thing is with rest. I would go to the gym when I was sick you guys when I did not feel well My body did not feel like working out and I would go to the gym and force myself through a workout That probably wasn't even worth it because I wasn't really putting that much effort in because I was sick and tired And did not make me feel good would make me feel worse afterward And I would do it because I thought I was being healthy because I was working out and going to the gym just basically bottom line is if it does not make you feel good it is probably not healthy for you no matter what you see online no matter what other people say it may be healthy for them but if it doesn't make your body feel good it's probably not healthy for you so listen to your body in order to be able to tell what is healthy and do that all right i feel like i've been talking for a while but we made it to number five the fifth thing that i wish i had known at the beginning of my fitness journey is that if something's not working 
don't be afraid to change it. Those mistakes that I were making that I've been describing throughout this entire video are all things that I continued to do for years and years, even though I wasn't seeing progress and I wasn't feeling good. I continued to do them because it's what I saw around me that was supposed to be healthy. And I was quite frankly, just scared of changing. Of course, there's something to be said for consistency. You don't want to start a program. And if you're not seeing results in two or three weeks, be like, I need to change everything. Progress does take time and consistency and patience. That is all true. But I'm saying that if it has been four to six months over that time and you're not seeing any changes, you're not seeing any progress, you're not going up in weight, you don't feel stronger, you don't feel physically better, or more energetic, or I don't know, like you're just not noticing any changes, then you probably need to change something. Or you need to at least step back and reevaluate what you're doing and what is working and what is not. Take a look at what you're doing and really try to pinpoint what might be contributing to the fact that I'm not seeing any progress. Am I overtraining? Am I not eating enough? Am I not getting enough sleep? Am I really stressed out all the time? Those are all things that can hinder your progress. And if you're recognizing some of those things, those are probably things that need to be changed in order for you to start making progress. The reason that one of my favorite quotes is nothing changes if nothing changes is because it's something that I have to constantly tell myself. I love routine. I feel so much safety in routine. Once I get in the groove of doing something a certain way, I will just keep on doing it that same way because it's what feels comfortable to me. And if things aren't working, it is really hard for me to push myself outside of my comfort zone to change what I'm doing. But you can't expect if you haven't been making progress doing these certain things to suddenly start making progress without changing anything. You need to change something in order to see change. And yes, change is scary. And you know what? Like maybe you make the wrong change. Maybe you think you're overtraining and you're actually not. And you end up doing less and you're still not seeing any progress or you see progress in the opposite direction. That is okay. At least you're trying something new. At least you're changing something. Our bodies are malleable and health is not a short term thing. It is a long term game. And if you are pursuing health, you need to be willing to make changes and make mistakes and be okay making mistakes, but then learn from those mistakes and change what you're doing in order to move forward. You may change something and it may be the wrong change, but that's okay because guess what? You can just change again. If I could just go back and tell my younger self, do not be afraid to change if something's not working, I would have started making progress so much earlier than I did. So those are the five things that I wish I had known before I started my fitness journey. And like I said, this is probably going to be a part one. So stay tuned for part two because there are many more things that I wish I would have known when I started. I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please let me know in the comments or you can shoot me a DM over at my Instagram at Reese Madeline Fit. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and just for supporting me. I think it was the other week I checked my channel and I had over a hundred subscribers, which seems very small, but it really does mean so much to me to see that people out there are watching my videos. Hopefully someone is getting someone out of it. So again, just thank you guys for being here. I really do appreciate it and I am so grateful. If you did like this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. You can also subscribe to my channel if you wanna see more of me and go ahead and follow me on my Instagram if you want to see more of what I do both in and out of the gym. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Oh,